My name is Prasad. I um, work as a professor in chemistry department and also currently heading uh, teaching learning center. This center is uh, established in 2011, first of its kind in the IIT system. Now other IITs also started teaching learning center, but IIT Madras teaching learning center is the first in the IIT system. The idea of this center was uh, seen higher education. Teachers were hired without having any training in teaching because the argument is if you know the subject, you can teach it. So they see your PhD, your research output and your contributions and if you have done fantastically good or then you will be hired based on that alone. So the argument is if you know your subject, you can teach is valid to a certain extent. You have to know your subject to teach it, but it is like necessary but not sufficient condition. So in science we have this phrase, it is necessary but not sufficient. Subject knowledge is necessary for teaching but not sufficient for teaching. So what it makes the sufficient part is called pedagogy is a more familiar term, andragogy is a bit more technical term in higher education, pedagogy is called andragogy. That means how to teach. So the purpose of this center is basically to train teachers in higher education about how to teach because that part is missing in the uh, faculty members who are hired for higher education teaching. Because the success that effective teaching comes a combination of your content knowledge as well as andragogy. So that is the purpose of this center. But today we are here, you are all PhD students. So we thought of discussing something about learning aspects, teaching learning are kind of you know highly connected words, you cannot just take one out of the other one. So today we are going to discuss for till 5.30 about developing self-regulated learning skills. Suppose some of you want to become a teacher in the future, right? You also go to the classroom and you also want your students to develop these skills because the more the learners develop this skill, teacher can take a back seat because you are training the students or the learners how to learn by themselves. Why do we need a teacher? Who taught the first teacher? Right? <laughs> So, in higher education, the more you develop your own skills of learning, that is kind of going to help you for the entire life, not only the semester, for the entire life you develop that skill. So this is what we are going to discuss in this session. This story probably every one of you know. A woodsman was once asked, you have five minutes to cut the tree. What do you do? What would you do if you have just 5 minutes to chop down a tree? Woodsman had self-regulated thought process. So he replied, I would spend the first 2 and half minutes sharpening my axe. I won't jump, start cutting the trees because I have only 5 minutes. This is an indication of self-regulated learning part because no, most of the students when you are doing PhD also, PhD also involves a lot of learning. When you are sitting in a classroom also, learning process usually happens without much of a self-regulation. You just jump and then start about the content processing. So what research on education says that you should have just jumping and doing it, why do not you pause? see what is happening and then try to regulate it. Get some awareness what is going on here and then try to regulate it and then learn. So we will see how we can do that. Okay, I would like just on record place uh, 
thank you note for my mentor, Professor Jeff Freud from Ohio State University. He was the head of the Department of Engineering Education. Um, unfortunately, he recently passed away, uh, but he used to come here and train many faculty members in IIT Madras in teaching learning center. So, I would like to thank him for his contribution. <coughs> so, if you start thinking about what is this self-regulated learning process. There is a beautiful article, it is available free. What is all the fuss about metacognition? Metacognition is another terminology used in a wider sense of self-regulated learning by uh, Sean Field, he is a mathematics teacher. So, in that article, uh, this integral or integration uh, is only an example that he used in that paper. It is not about how to integrate or not we are not going to integrate things, but the idea is that because he was a mathematics teacher and he was conducting exams on mathematics for particular problems whenever for example, in this particular problem this can be solved by multiple ways. There are different routes to solve for any problem you can have different routes. Some routes takes probably 10 minutes some routes takes 10 2 minutes. So, he observed that in exams hall students are just starting doing the problem without actually reflecting upon whether it is a long route or a short route. See both can be taken, but students are not really using that they are not pausing and then regulating their thoughts simply just start doing it. And after you know probably sometimes they do several steps then they see that okay, it is going not going anywhere or it is going in wrong way or it is going lengthy way then they go back and restart it. This happens because in the beginning we did not have any self regulated thought process in the brain. We simply started doing it cutting the tree. So, this is where the importance why can't we pause when a problem is given to you it applies to the search, it applies to everyday life, it applies everywhere. Whenever we start thinking, why do not we do meta thinking? That is a question. Meta, meta means, meta means about, right. So, meta thinking means thinking about thinking. That is called self regulated learning, it is also called meta cognition. So, I told so many things to you, but now what I want is why do you think this is important for learners? So, the reason why you are sitting in table is you can have a discussion face to face discussion. Otherwise, I would have put benches and desks here, right. So, take a minute answer this question in your own perspective. Why do you think we have a very brief discussion about metacognition from whatever you understood from that discussion try to answer this question note down after discussion you can join any other group. Your answers must be the group answer, not an individual answer. If the question is not clear, please ask me. Question one more time. So, we were talking about self regulated thought process, its importance, what is it? Important, we did not discuss, we said what is it? Now, the question is why do you think it is important for students or learners, PhD students, students who are taking courses? Whenever you learn, does not have to be PhD or in class, people learn because we keep learning every day. In that process, why do you think this particular aspect is important?
you want to join somewhere or there is one group there Okay, so shall we take some feedback, whatever answers that you have in each table, uh, one from your table, you can use the microphone. Sir, uh, what I think is it is important because uh, in uh, doing anything for in future, so the sharpening of the skill is more important when we are going to practice it in future. So that there are not uh, major iteration. For example, in that goods man, if uh, it would have directly started, uh, directly started cutting the tree, hmm. then uh, might be after some time that X had uh, become blunt, and again he has it, uh, he has to go to sharpen it again. Hmm. But at a time he is spending two and a half minutes to just to sharpen the X. And after that, he might just take half uh, half a minute to cut the tree. Hmm. So that is why. It, so what is what are we achieving in terms of that story or the woodsman is what is he achieving basically? So achieving before practicing something, I think uh, you should be the master of that skill. So it's like pre-preparation. Pre-preparation, sir. Okay, so pre-preparation helps in what? Uh, so in that case, in achieving the target better. Better, so that's the one word efficiency, right? So you become more efficient. Efficiency is what doing the same thing in less time. That's called efficiency. Do things, achieve the targets in lesser amount of time. That's called efficiency. Everybody can achieve the target, but if you take long time, then what's the point? Your smartness is quick, but effective. That's called. So, this particular part of metacognitive learning or self-regulated learning help the people to become smart because they achieve the target with less time. Efficiency. Okay. Another aspect from this day. You can use the microphone so that they are recording it. It is a mindful way of doing uh, smart work to increase productivity and higher efficiency. If uh, are, ah, so uh, again, same aspect, same, same line yeah. of thought is coming, right? A more efficient uh, way of conducting the work. Any other, other than this efficiency aspect? So once a person develops this skill of thinking about how they are thinking, Hmm. They get space to be uh, creative, uh -huh. to be uh, independent uh, rather than what everyone else is doing. Right. They, they have a space huh. to think on their own, yes. which eventually leads to creativity, uh, independent thinking. Right. So, this basically you become a kind of independent in thought process because you are getting more and more awareness about the thoughts that is happening here. You do not need a guidance. Now, we have a PhD guide. At some point, you know, you start creating your own ideas, thoughts, because you are becoming more and more aware what is happening here. You are not just following instructions. See, as long as you are following instructions, somebody has to give the instruction. But the moment you take over the leadership and you start, you become more and more aware about the thought process, then independent thinking skills can come. That is what we want in learners. If you are a teacher, that skill you want in your learners. If you are a learner, you also want that skill because you become a better learner. Any other aspects? So, so we were thinking that some methods hmm. maybe hmm. some methods may be more robust than ah. others. 
example, in some methods you may uh, depend on your memory, mm -hmm. while others may be based on a first principle method. Yes. So fail safe and robustness if you ponder upon the options. Obviously, so the optimizing the you know the the process, self regulation plays a big role. There have multiple ways of reaching the target, which which way you need to take. So, optimizing that process that is very important in learning. So, that also is another uh, advantage for the learner if he or she spends time to improve that skill. See, this is also a skill like any cognitive skills, any thinking skills, metacognitive skills are also skills, you need to work on it. How do people get skill? By practice. Any skill is by practice only, there is no easy way to geometry, right. So, that comes, this is also like another skill, one has to work for it, then you can improve it, okay. Any additional thoughts from your team or all are gone, all are already told? Yeah, uh, so I think uh, while thinking, uh, while contemplating before attempting anything, so they also ponder upon different concepts. Hmm. So, it is not just that uh, you are seeing the solution to one method, to a single lens. Mm -hmm, Probably mm -hmm. you are uh, thinking about various ways of approaching it and mm -hmm. in the process you are also learning about many other things. Concepts. Yep. It kind of a big picture. Yeah. That is very important. Otherwise, you become you know very narrow approach towards solving a problem. You get a big picture because you are contemplating, you are kind of uh, strategizing your thought process. So, obviously, brain starts going other aspects of uh, the same problem. So, you get a big picture about the solve problem as well as problem solving approaches. That is good. Any additional points? In my view, uh, I mean my view can be concluding remarks. Whatever so, you want to wait, let the mothers tell. <laughs> I mean, yeah. okay, you go ahead. Yeah. So, whatever process which we are following right now to yeah. answer that question, yeah. in my view, it is metacognition. Uh, yes, as, see, whenever we start thinking, other part of somewhere the brain is also doing metacognition. We watch ourselves when we speak or when we think, we can also do the same parallelly. See, we can do this metacognition or self regulation in three different tense, present, past, future. We did something, then we start going and repenting, why did we do that? That is because we are now regulating, but at a, at a later stage. Sometimes we are planning something, there also you, could, you can do the self-regulation. Present tense also possible, that is why we, you, we choose words, choice of words, choice of action. So, the same, at the same time you can regulate that is a skill probably a bit difficult, normally people fall in the other two category, but if you work on it, you can have that skill also. So, as you said, when we discuss about metacognition, there is a metacognition working on it, yes, correct. Any? So, it is like having a bird's eye view. Huh, yeah. So, when you know all the possible paths, there are two, I, like we think that there are two possible outcomes of that. Hmm. Firstly, you can guide others. Mm. that okay I know there this is the path but there is also this path mm. and uh, who knows by taking some other path you can get something else uh, in the path and maybe that path leads to something uh, other that you are mm. not looking for at that time mm -hmm. but at some other time that would like become useful. Yeah, yeah. So, become exploratory or, yeah. or no, not exploratory necessarily but uh, you can actually become creative and then open up something else as a result of this bird's eye view. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, that is also possible. So, generally there are any anybody else wants to add anything, okay. So, there are several several advantage for learners, some of them you already told, identify one's own thinking pattern, right. When you learn a subject, when you when you start exploring it, our own thought process about that you can identify. So, that leads to this particular thing like you know you, you find out where you need to, to strengthen that part. For example, if you do not remember names, there are people who are difficulties in remembering names, but if you are not aware of it or if you want, if you become aware of it, you can work on that 
or some aspect of the learning process you do not know. If you are not aware of it you cannot work on it. So, you need to become first aware of what is the strength, what is the weakness then you can work on it. So, that is the idea you can strengthen that area and you can design strategies for improving learning. Once you are having clarity what is going on here then see strategy A versus strategy B. These are called learning styles different people learn by different ways. But if you are not aware of your own learning style what works for you how do you pick up the learning style. So, there was a research study where a person asked people how do you learn some people say I, I, I learn by writing some people say I, I, I like pictures that is a way. But finally, when they start preparing for something they do not pick up that pathway where they actually learn they just go back the same way you know most of the time they just read it or write it without having their own knowing their own strength what is the learning style they are uh, you know works for them better that is because they are not applying their self regulated thoughts. And sometimes you can revise the efficacy of the strategy some strategy you choose and if it is not working you can revise the strategy or you can change the strategy. But for that also you need to reflect. So, kind of reflective thinking or self regulated thinking metacognitive thinking really helps you to process much faster and efficient way. So, this is what we said a, a large part of metacognitive ability is controlled by self regulated learning this another word is metacognition meta means above cognition means thinking. So, metacognition becomes thinking about thinking thinking about your own thinking. So, you just go above and watch your own brain functioning as you like as a metaphor metaphysics meta material there are so many places you see this meta. So, it just means that from the normal domain you just go up and then start looking what is happening here. Okay. Whenever we learn anything it is likely that you fall in one of these quadrants one quadrant say I know I know that is the status of the learning process. Another quadrant said I know I do not know that much I am clear. Some quadrant some people lie here I do not know that I know and there are people here also I do not know even I do not know blissful ignorance. So, the question is suppose you are good in metacognition which quadrant you think you likely to fall take a minute think about it if you are good in metacognition which quadrant you think you will likely to fall. You can have also a small discussion I told you the reason why I put you this model is They are volunteers or this team? We are also participating, right? Okay. So you tell what your what is your opinion? This one, I I know I do not know. Okay. Let us ask somebody. So they are not grouping, but they are sitting individually. Let us ask. Uh, you are saying this, huh? These two, these two. Okay. Last one. Uh, I know what I know this one this one or this one oh, see, okay you are chatting yeah normally this is the way counting one two so this one two okay top two you are going okay top two here top two yeah so uh, so your group top two both are there not just one because once you become good in metacognition basically you are getting more and more awareness about your own thought process. So, at more clarity you bring here there will be black and white I know I know I do not I know I do not know. Most of the places where the learner is this line is diffusive 
because there are kind of kind of area where we are not sure, but we are not sure we are not sure or we are we are struggling to see that you know which part is I can firmly say that I am aware of it and where it starts this unawareness the exact point of disjoining that happens only when you start reflecting upon. So, metacognition helps you to identify your strength as well as your weakness that is the beauty of metacognition. Many people think that knowing the weakness is a greater advantage than the other one it is not like that we need to have knowledge on both what is our strength what is our weakness you can strength you can work on both so that the improvement can achieve ok. Now, uh, you can put yourself as a learner now the question is now we have discussed about metacognition we know it is important for learners all those things everybody agreed. I want you to think about a method because finally, we need to practice this part how to develop this skill that is important. So, next question is I want you to think about a method or more than a, more than one method through which you can increase the metacognitive ability of learners. So, normally this question is asked for teachers that is why we think of a course that you are teaching and what do you do to promote either you can assume as well as a teacher by yourself and assume that you are going to teach a course or think from the learners perspective what way you will improve the metacognitive abilities. So, take a couple of minutes think first by yourself no doubt then discuss. So, once you have a set of ideas please share you can come here share with each other in the table.
How many how many methods you have generated? Yeah, I mean for a course mm. we are aiming to figure out for a given course. Right. How many methods for you generated, I mean as of now? Uh, we can think of different ways of uh, so there are different methods. We can improve this skill. Like what exactly a teacher should do in a class or what exactly a learner should do. So like that. And I, you know, something that we can do, that's called method, right? Finally, it should be implementable in a, in a real situation. So when we say method, is something like you should be able to implement it, either as a learner or as a teacher. A, a package, something that you know somebody can actually do it. So when we say method, it means. If you are a teacher, when you go to the class, you should be able to do it. But if you are a learner, you can also practice something. Something which is really, we can put into practice. So method like a tool, we should be able to implement it. Okay, so let us get some feedback. Uh, we will start from this team. One, just one aspect, you have many, I think. Uh. So, according to us, like uh, if uh, we provide the learners to, uh, to be able to visualize it, mm. like intuitively, that mm. what is going on, so maybe it it can help them to increase their uh, metacognitive ability. Apart from them, uh, I think uh, we can make our own story. Hmm. So as to relate, like. Uh, okay. So let us let us take this visualization part. Like you say that suppose you are a teacher, you should allow the students or the learners in your class to visualize things. So when they visualize, how does it help the self-regulation process? Can you just explain it? I learned it by my professor as well. Mm. So actually, uh, we are working in antenna. So uh, actually, my professor told me that how fields are varying nearby the antenna. So from him, actually, I am learned that uh, what is going on nearby the antenna, how electric field is varying, how magnetic field. Yeah. Varying. So uh, so one aspect I think probably we we need to pay attention here is. When you become, when you visualize things, uh, and when when the professor is helping, guiding, we are all going the domain of cognition. But what we need is metacognition. So there is a slight difference between the kind of uh, activity that we need to purposefully choose, so that you can address the metacognitive element. Cognitive elements is is fine. So if you visualize something. You have the electric field, magnetic field, perpendicular, so all those thought processes are there. But that is thought process, not thought process about thought process. Metacognition is thought process about thought process. So we are talking about a level up than the normal level. You want more time? Okay, take a few minutes. I know, but if you tell, then that will be input for others. I think they need some more time. You have a question or? Uh, example final. Let us just hold. Uh, we will uh, give one more t minute or one and a half minute. Just have a quick discussion. You want to revise something that strategy you already told or already prepared.
Okay, we'll try it again. Uh, one feedback from this team. Yeah, so I think uh, we can incorporate a certain form of exercises okay. uh, in every course. Mm. Let's say which will allow the students to answer some elaborative questions, but huh. we will give limited space, okay. so they are kind of forced to think before right. Huh. And even if they don't know the answer, mm. they will be allowed to open discussion so that they know about, they gather all information, think mm. about it, process, and then learn, and then write. So they are kind of forced to think before right. I think this kind of exercises will help them think before they do, so make an informed decision basically. So you are saying that uh, space is limited so that they are forced to regulate their thoughts before say, they… Let us say sometimes what happens is we are given a maths problem. Mm -hmm. We before even thinking about the problem, there are n number of ways, ways. to solve it. We right. first go on with one way, scratch mm -hmm. it down, and then do the mm -hmm. other way. Mm -hmm. This way, they have to think before they write or solve the math problem. So they will first of all, they have to be exactly sure that this works, this way works, mm -hmm. and then only they can write. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's somewhat helping the the, the process of metacognition because you are there is a force element. The only uh, uh, concern is. Suppose a student work out something in that limited space. As a teacher, how do I know that they use the metacognitive abilities or not? Uh, for all likelihood, you are forcing. But suppose if by chance they took that method which actually fits with that space. So there we are actually, I mean consciously as a teacher, I am not aware whether they utilize the metacognitive abilities or not. That is only concerned, but definitely it will help uh, many students to force, reflect upon the thought process that they are going to take for solving that problem. Okay. Sir, if we mm. allow them to write different problems in ah. this way, so mm. the chance factor can come in one particular problem, but if they are able to solve all sorts of problems, mm -hmm. then we can get rid of the chance factor there. Huh. Yeah, so there will be, I mean, we can reduce that probability that, that so as far as our likelihood it is going to help the persons to, the only thing is as a teacher I am not able to extract that metacognitive element from the learner because finally I am getting a cognitive answer. For any exercise that I am giving if the input, the output is cognitive, I am missing the metacognitive aspects. That is the only concern. Okay, let us hear more and more example, another from here. So my method is kind of completely opposite of what he was proposing. Okay. My method was give infinite time, infinite okay. space, <laughs> uh, uh, give uh, the simplest of problems uh, in the field uh, and also give one solution which is the most obvious one okay. and then ask students to come up with either two or three more ways of thinking. Uh, so now they do not have any pressure of time so uh, that they will not uh, go in a haste and directly start with the solution that first comes into their mind. Mm. So give them infinite time, like if problem usually takes half, like 30 minutes, give them like a full day or ho the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. So that they have the time, they have the space mm. to organize their thoughts, try out different different. So now the question is, suppose I give infinite amount of time and the person is thinking about several ways of solving the problem. Again, but he is thinking, right? Is he thinking about thinking about thinking? My, my problem is I want them to think about their thinking. In this case, they may be keep on thinking, there is no question about it, <laughs> but they are not thinking about their thinking. So, that, so any approach normally in teaching learning process in every class you go, teachers are focusing on thought process only. Any kind of question that you receive in your PhD program or in course, they are all now currently focusing on cognition. Metacognition is a future aspect, still not in education system, we are not following that. We are talking about down the line, but it is going to catch up soon. There are a lot of research going on, so it will come. Uh, as of now, it is that the difficulty that we are facing is the kind of uh, task that is given to us by teachers mostly are cognitive in nature, 99.99. So now I am asking you to find out something extra to that, that is what? We will we'll figure it out. There are, there are many ways we can. So let us hear, when I ask teachers, 
they give you examples not even close to what you told me. So, I think this team is much better than the normal teachers that I get. Another, another, another input from your team. Okay. Huh. 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 And we can ask them. Yes. Why do this? Yes. That is the probing of metacognition. That is one one way that people can use. Let them get their cognitive part first, and then probe to get this cognition. What were your thought process? Tell me that also. So that is probing metacognition, right? So that is one way of getting that uh, not directly ask cognitive question or ask cognitive, but additional question part B that has to be given. Yes. Any other things that comes to your mind? Ah, your team. So, uh, okay. Uh, we have uh, something, we have figured out something. So, what if we all have figured, uh, have seen this kind of LHS equal to RHS questions, right? The answers are already given to us. Uh -huh. and we have to prove that. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, it's something similar to that. So, uh -huh. I can ask the student to prove something. Mm. I'm already providing him with the answer or her uh, with the answer. Mm. Now he or she have to think that how he will reach the answer. Mm. Mm. To enforce this thing mm. uh, more, mm. we all have a bias. If mm. we know a solution method, we are biased to think on that way, pathway, mm. right? Mm. So uh, we will provide an answer and a path to the answer also. Okay. And we will ask them to solve it in some different way. We will ask them to alternate way. Yeah, mm. alternate mm. way. And they are not supposed to use the same way. So in that way, they will think about the process that what pathways they can take to reach to the answer. They have a fixed endpoint, okay. and they have some restricted paths they uh -huh. can't take. So they will think of something new. new they path. will think. I'm agreeing that. Yeah. But do they think about their thinking? Yeah, but in that process, maybe. But how do I know as a teacher? So I, I'm looking for something that I can do in a class. Okay. So. Or if a learner, I want to practice it. Suppose I am doing alternate ways of doing solving a problem. Mm. I will be keep, you know, very hard thinking. How do I solve in a different way? At that process, I have the ability to see whether I am thinking in the right direction, but not necessarily that I should. I will do that. So thinking hard of alternate ways is not metacognition. While thinking hard, you need to have another processor which is monitoring these different approaches that you are taking. Okay, what if we ask them to solve in two or three different ways the same problem? Yeah, so, the, so that, that, that can provide you how cognitively he is processing different, different things. But again, meta part is not coming. Okay. So again, this, this, this you know, thought process are so complex, so we, may not, we cannot say that he is not or she is not using metacognition ability to come up with this. Only thing is we are ignorant teachers from because the output is cognitive. They give method 1, method 2, method 3, three different ways of solving the problem. That is what I am seeing on the paper. But how do I know that they have utilized the metacognitive abilities to solve these three methods? That is what, what I am looking for in this particular context. Okay. Any, any suggestions? Okay. You you learn better when you teach, right? There was a there was a famous writer in in Kerala. Uh, so he he once one of the things he wrote, you know, God punishes those who are not learning the lessons at the school age, and they become teachers because at least for teaching they will learn. Yeah. So but then how does it become metacognitively? So essentially what you are saying that, so the person is gathering the materials uh, for the teaching purpose and if there are drawbacks in that, that tells you that the person <coughs> did not reflect sufficiently 
Uh, so same thing is applicable for learning process also. So if the person is not giving the proper answer, can we say that he did not or she did not use the metacognitive abilities? Yeah, but okay. So that conclusion may be valid, but what I want is a method to improve that. I am getting the absence. They did not use it, but that is not sufficient for me. I am trying to develop a method through which I can improve that quality of meta thinking. So like they said, you know, you ask one question, demand and a cognitive answer, another question. So that second question is the method. So like that we need to have generating methods for improving meta cognitive thought process. Okay. So, in that journaling part, they should be forced, like this, they will be asked to write very specifically the kind of thought process they are undergoing. Hmm. So, during that process, somewhere they should be forced to describe, like when they learn the concept and when they uh, say that this is related to this day to day life activity, these are all describing cognition only. So now where we incorporate this, because somewhere they should write, I was thinking like this or I was thinking that way, that has to come from the learner. He is now or he after that thought process, he is reflecting and then realizing that I was thinking that way, I was thinking this way, that information you need to capture. Then once we realize that they are thinking in a right direction, wrong direction, then you can provide that information not, not, or even if the teacher does not help to provide the information, the person is getting more and more clarity by taking this out. So that ability is called metacognition. By doing, redoing, the person becomes more and more good in that. That is all we want. Because once you get develop that skill, then you can pick up by your own. That is the idea. Okay. I am asking this table finally because they already told some methods which are useful. So, yeah. I uh, will tell two things. Hmm. First, uh, at the end of each session, we will ask students to summarize what they have learned and what they are not clear or what they do not understand. Um, this sort of forces them to think about what they have learned, the learning process that happened in their session, and they get to become aware of what they know and what they do not know from that specific session. Uh, this is one thing. Okay. So this particular example, there is a name we are going to discuss that is called minute paper. It's a simple a name for this technical. Minute paper is something that you can do as a learner, you can do as a teacher. What you do is every hour of the class or after any session, you take a small piece of paper and you are supposed to address two questions. Question is, what is most clear? in that one hour of interaction, most clear. There will be many things that is clear to you. Question is most clear. Second question is what is muddiest, most unclear. So what happens? There will be clear part many, there will be unclear cut part many. Now the mind will start redoing all those things happening, a quick rehearsal will happen and then start thinking about your own thought process happening to segregate clear, clearer, clearest. So that is what you are writing, even though the, uh, uh, the, the, the final output is cognitive. You say that you know, this concept is not clear, this concept was clear, this is the answer that we are getting. But one time writing will not improve metacognition. Imagine the person is writing this minute paper for every class for a semester. Then the person will be slowly start realizing that okay, certain aspects of things, this coming as clear, certain aspects of the topics, there is a pattern in my clarity as well as unclear aspects, clear aspects as well as unclear aspects, there is a pattern. The moment you recognize that pattern, that is called metacognition, not the one answer of minute paper. You write a series of minute paper and at some point you will realize that, hey, some things I am seeing is 
I am seeing a kind of pattern in my clear part and there is another pattern for unclear part. For example, trigonometry part is clear, but algebra is not something like I mean I am just telling that different aspects something is more appealing something not, but I need to realize that because it is my brain functioning. So, that development is called metacognitive dual. So, this particular method is useful for the lot of research happening for minute paper you can just google it minute paper metacognition A lot of research articles will come okay, so that is one standard methods of improving you have a note, another second one? final so make students do a, a first correction of their own exam papers um, this provides only space for metacognition we can't ensure metacognition happens so when they correct we also ask them to write uh, what uh, do they learn from the mistakes that they observe from their own paper and also how they can avoid. So, asking them to do this will force them to do. Very similar to this team said, but this is this also possible in terms of an uh, exam question, uh, because when they do the question that is pure cognitive. Now, the question is not about content, how did you answer that question that way, why did you answer that question that way, how do you answer differently. So, this kind of or what were your thought process when you answer that question. So, this second part of questioning is basically focusing on metacognition. So, anybody would like to add any, any uh, additional just thoughts? A point. Uh -huh. So, my point is not about second uh, uh -huh. part, uh -huh. my point is about doing corrections okay. and uh, may, uh, students write uh, giving suggestions hmm. to themselves okay. how they can do better and different uh -huh. so during the correction process. Okay. So, that is like suppose this question is posed to you again, how do you answer it, how do you go about it, what approach would you take? So, in a future that is what I said in a different time scale you can do that metacognition same situation happens in our life again, how do you respond? If you respond the same way that means you are not even reflecting upon your, your you know whatever happens. So, that is another method. So, as all you, all you can see that minute paper we already discussed, this is a very useful uh, technique to develop metacognition, write exam wrapper that is what he said the te te technical term is called exam wrapper. How did you prepare for an exam or a particular question in the exam? What questions did you find difficult? How do you plan to prepare if the same questions are posted again? So, see the, the characteristic feature of this metacognitive questions, they are not content questions, they are not asking to you know define this or solve this the standard questions that you are getting are cognitive in nature, right. But these are all not cognitive questions, these are all metacognitive questions. So, you can see that the, the difference between metacognitive question and cognitive question is cognitive questions are focusing on content as such, metacognitive questions will focus on how do you process the content. So, we are more important about the processing part and we need to dig it out from the learner instead of guessing it we are forcing the learner to tell us what was the thought process you tell how your brain worked that is a standard thing. So, same thing can be done for lecture also you give a 10 minutes lecture 15 minutes lecture ask the same thing reflect upon and then do a lecture wrapper include reflective questions in the assignments 10 questions in the assignments. So, you can think about 11th question asking what were your thought process in answering question number 9, that is 11th question, this is not a content question. We want to dig out their thought process, many learners I tell you they are not even prepared to write that, because such questions are never asked. We always ask solve this, write this, draw this, all cognitive, completely cognitive in nature. Uh, design format questions. So, certain like multiple choice question you make a 10 multiple choice question on this same thing. So, you when you confine to think in a particular way you are forced to do the reflective thought process. Diagnostic quiz that is also another way of uh, that means, you ask one question you get an answer you ask another question to diagnose what kind of thought process happens in the first question. So, that way you can uh, improve the 
metacognitive concept map. I don't know how many of you are familiar about concept. Basically, flow charts or tree diagrams where you have multiple concepts, you try to connect different concepts, how they are interconnected. So, a lot of chaining out of ideas will happen that also helps uh, metacognitive abilities. So, all these references uh, either you can note it down, maybe it is too small, but I can send you the slides also if you want. Okay, toward the end, we have 10 more minutes. Huh. Sure, sure. Okay. 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 Very good. I, my job is done, so I can stop also after <laughs> no, this, right? I, I know you very well, so you won't stop. So Thank this is you. On behalf of the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to run to that. Sure. 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 Okay. If they are not okay. Sure. All right. So, last ten minutes, we are going to. It's going to be really thick. Okay. Uh, what you see on the y-axis is what you do in learning any subject. Doesn't matter which subject you learn. It can be chemistry. It can be physics. It can be engineering. Your entire brain runs between these processing or you can think about anything else other than this, your brain can do. I am talking about pure thought process, no emotions attached, thought process, dry thought, thought process. A lot, large number of thought processes is memory, right. Then some conceptual, conceptual understanding, conceptual comprehension. We say it's a, he understands, she understands the concepts. Sometimes in a, in a situation where you can apply the concepts, right? F is equal to ma, mass is the acceleration, you just put in the plug in the numbers, calculate force, you are applying that concept. Analyze, that means the, the context is very unfamiliar, you have some concepts, but the context is unfamiliar, okay. So, you do not know how to proceed, you have enough data, you start looking connecting things that is called analysis. So, your brain whenever brain try to connect things and identify this chunk is connected to this chunk this way that is called analysis. So, that can happen evaluation is or evaluate is hypothesis development or in PhD you are supposed to do hypothesis generation logical guess. So, any evaluation that means evaluation is decision making how do people take decisions based on guidelines. There should be some guidelines to take any decision. The only difference is either you are taking decision based on somebody's guidelines or your own guidelines. Without guidelines, there cannot be decision making. So, if you are developing your own guidelines and decide, then you say you are evaluating. That thought process is called evaluation level. Create level is invention, discovery, a new thought, new idea, right. These are all we can do with this stuff. What else? People have done a lot of research on this and they come up with these six things, okay. So, and in any subject that you learn, there are factual things. Like so, India got independence in 1970s, 1947. So, that is a history, that is a fact thing, right. So, factual things are there or uh, mass of an electron is this. So, these are, there are factual things, there are conceptual things and there are procedural things that means sequential. You do this first, then you do this, then you do this. So, every subject there are procedural way of doing it and in every subject you can add this element also. Now, we know that metacognition can also be added. This basically this rubric is developed for teachers to help what you should do in each of these boxes, so that you can have a one to one correspondence. Suppose you want them to apply a fact, you can write here what you should do. Suppose you want them to analyze a concept, you can write here. Suppose they want to create a particular procedure, right, so you can use this box. 
So, any cognitive aspects in any of these cognitive loads, you call it cognitive load, different loads, you can actually train the learners. Same way we talked about a lot about metacognition, what we are now telling is metacognition is possible in any of these cognitions. Cognition is simple thought process, we divided into 6. Now, we are telling in each of these 6, a metacognition is possible. Only thing is, I am dividing them into 6 cognitive uh, levels. Each of the level, I can go above and look back. What am I thinking, right? So, each of this process, I can do a metacognition. So, what I want is to, I fill the columns for you, upper level. I want you to try here, because this session is about metacognition. So, you can look at this, I ask them to list facts. So, the cognitive load is remember and this part is factual things, right? Uh, or describe facts, that is a conceptual understanding about the facts. Or recall a concept, apply the concept, you draw a plot based on the concept. So, I am giving the, the job to a learner with all these cognitive aspects. But what kind of job I can give in these different cognitive levels in a metacognitive domain? That is a question. I know it is evening, I know it is, you have been through two days continuous symposium. Even cognition is not working, how do <laughs> metacognition work? I understand the situation, but still. I think just thinking about metacognition. <laughs> so, it is another level, one more level. But did you understand the, the job actually? The job is the same thing. We, we, you developed several methods for metacognition in the previous exercise. Same thing, only thing is now categorize those jobs according to the cognitive load, because there are different cognitive processes. In those processes, how do we uh, put it? That is only, only question, but probably it is a very difficult thought process. Even for teachers, they really struggle, but we will stop at this point. Uh, I will leave it like an open-ended question, you can go back and then check it, think about it. So, what I now want is, I want you to summarize this session. Normally, there is a slide called summary, we do not do that, because we request the learners to summarize this. So, that helps for your own, you know, learning process, teach and you to tell me. So, take a minute, take like one summary line about this session. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's thanks, Tana. Why don't we do a minute card? Yes. Let us see your metacognition also then. Just write two questions. What is the most clear aspect from this session? What is the muddiest part of this session? Now we are reflecting.
Once you are done, you can hand over the paper. It's called minute paper because generally it takes one minute. Okay. So, I mean, so generally in teachers, what we do is we um, read both. But when the next class we address the unclear part, because <laughs> so this is a feedback for me about you know when we conduct the session, what are the plus and minus? How do I modify when I do the next time? So unless I get your feedback, I cannot do that. So so thank you very much for coming to TLC. Okay, thank you. Wish you all the very best for your PhD program. Thank you.